Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. President Obama out there today saying no special prosecutor, no independent counsel to look into these abuses, these gross abuses at the IRS. He says, oh, we can handle that. Department of Justice, we got people of impeccable integrity at the Department of Justice. We can handle this. No problem. Let us at it. This despite the fact that governors all over the fruited plain are calling upon an outside special prosecutor. And boy, if there was ever a situation that required it, I would say this, in fact, would be it. Now, let's uh, uh, talk a little bit about this Associated Press scandal, re- re- really the scandal of the the uh, Department of Justice under Eric Coulter. This is the guy now that would be responsible to look into uh, the IRS. Anybody trust him to do that? I don't trust him. I don't trust him as far as I could kick him, which is uh, not uh, very far. Now, um, looking at this Associated Press thing, or just the general press thing, it turns out that the administration not only spied on the Associated Press, not only did they monitor up to 20 phone lines, including home phones, as well as cell phones and work phones, it also turns out that they spied on Congress. This is according to a Congressman David Nunez, who said, look, now he was talking about the phone in the cloakroom. This is kind of a place where only representatives go. It's kind of, I mean, it's not like it's it's secret, but the only people that are allowed in there are, are representatives. So it's a place where you'd expect to have some confidentiality and have some privacy. Now, apparently an update's come out. No, it wasn't the phone in the cloakroom, but they were phones in the Capitol building. So the... The, the Department of Justice, you talk about the violation of the separation of powers here, where the executive branch now, Department of Justice, they are monitoring phone lines in the Capitol building itself. I don't know what it's going to take to get the lawmakers here completely outraged on this deal, but maybe that will do it. Uh, Bob Schieffer out there today, uh, you know, Bob Schieffer, hardcore leftists, And it's significant that these people are no longer even trying to cover for Obama. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, President Obama is in trouble on this deal. That's the bottom line of all of this. President Obama is in trouble. And, uh, you know, we know this question I asked Dan Gaynor yesterday from the Media Research Center. How far is the media going to go to track this thing down to, to where it leads? If they follow, they do the Hansel and Gretel thing and they follow the breadcrumbs, this is going to lead them right to the doorway to the Oval Office. That's where it's going to go. And remember, we talked about this yesterday, but President Obama, when this Benghazi thing came out and people were going after Susan Rice for lying to everybody in the world and going after Hillary Clinton, he said, hey, don't go after them. You come after me. Buck stops with me. Don't track, don't chase them down. You want to go after somebody, you come after me. So basically he was accepting responsibility for what was going on with uh, Benghazi. So we're going to take you at your word. President Obama, you're you're the guy. There's a tone that you've established, have created, with the tone that you have set. You know, one of the principles of leadership is that a fish rots first from the head. So President Obama is in trouble. You know, I talked with you about that Politico column yesterday where President Obama doesn't have a friend in the world in Washington, D.C. Everybody's turned on him. The Republicans obviously have been his political adversaries, but the Democrats now are saying openly critical things about Obama. They don't want to be around. you got Max Baca saying Obamacare is going to be a train wreck. You've got a lot of other Democrats appalled at what they have seen here about both the IRS scandal and the press scandal. They're appalled by it. They're critical of the Obama administration. So there goes the second of his uh, group of of fanboys. And now the media has turned on him. The media is going after him, and he's lost them as well. Let's, uh, Rob, if we can, let's grab the Lisa Myers clip number seven. This is just an illustration. This is Lisa Myers. She is, she's NBC, so she's hardcore leftist. They've been part of the cheerleading squad I mean, that's, you know, you, you apply for a job at the Washington Post or the New York Times or NBC. It's like going to a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader tryout. 
They want to know how actively and how aggressively and how effectively you can cheerlead for liberal policies, for secular fundamentalist policies, and for the politicians that uh, adhere to those. So it's, they're nothing more than cheerleader tryouts. You apply for a job, and these are cheerleader squads. Just picture them in their little pom-poms on the set of NBC or ABC or Good Morning America. You know, just picture those anchors in their little cheerleading outfits, waving their little pom-poms with their cute little plastic smile, and that's exactly what you are uh, looking at. But even the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders now are turning on the Dallas Cowboys. Here's Lisa Myers, uh, NBC, and listen to how she describes, Dan Gaynor mentioned this yesterday, but listen to how she describes the ministers of propaganda in the mainstream media. About. Then comes the IRS, which offended the right, the middle, and even some, some Democrats and, and members of the press. But when, when they did this, they turned one of the president's most important constituencies, the press and the left, against him. And so politically, I, it, it's hard to imagine, and this is a very calculating White House, it's hard to imagine that they would have green-lighted this kind of thing. I think it's more uh, likely that this was something that was handled within the Justice Department and that if the White House was notified, it was after the fact in a in, uh, and not before the action was taken. So Lisa Myers, you'll notice she's still trying to provide some cover for Barack Obama. This is Department of Justice. So what we're getting ready to see here is Eric Holder is going to be the next one to get thrown under the bus. That IRS guy, he was forced to resign. That guy was going to be out of there in June anyway. That was a meaningless kind of move on President Obama's part, but it's of a piece with what he always seems to want to do. He wants to use this very aggressive language, this tough tone, we're going to take action. We're going to get to the bottom of this. We're going to track them down to the ends of the earth. Meanwhile, that Ansar al-Sharia group that's responsible, everybody knows they were responsible for the Benghazi attack. They're still, they're still operating wide open in Benghazi. No restrictions, doing their thing. The mastermind of the thing is walking around Benghazi. Everybody knows who he is, and, and he has no fear of anything. So it's just all talk. It's all smoke. It's all mirrors. It, it's, it's empty. There's no content to it. And that's what that firing of that IRS guy yesterday it was a way for Obama to look like he's being tough. He can use tough language. Boy, we're going to punish everybody that's responsible. We're going to we're going to leave no stone unturned. We're going to find out who's responsible, and we are going to deal with them. Well, this guy was gone in June anyway, so this was just is a completely meaningless move on President Obama's uh, uh, part. Now, um, here is uh, Bob Schieffer uh, talking about. The focus now has been on Eric Holder, but he says, look, you have a problem here that goes all the way to the top. Now, remember, Bob Schieffer, one of Barack Obama's biggest fanboys, both election cycles. And this is a piece uh, on hotair.com this morning. He was on CBS this morning, and he's talking about the, the, the kind of leadership at the White House. Schieffer describes the lack of confidence induced by plausibility run amok where no one in executive positions knows anything except what they read in the newspaper. So, you know, what Schieffer's point out is everybody says, I don't know anything. I found out about it the same time you did. I, I, I discovered that by reading it in the newspaper, just like you did. I mean, it's like you have this administration. You listen to these people. These people are the most ignorant, the most ill-informed, the most uneducated people about political affairs on planet Earth. If what these people are telling us is the truth, that that they had the that the media knew about this stuff before they did, then they are hopelessly, helplessly incompetent and have no business running this country. And if that's not true, then they're lying through their teeth and are morally disqualified from running this country. Here's uh, Dana Milbank. A, a columnist for the Washington Post, as the nation's top law enforcement official, Eric Holder is privy to all kinds of sensitive information, but he seems to be proud of how little he knows. Holder seemed to regard this ignorance as a shield protecting him and the Justice Department from all criticism of the Obama administration's assault on press freedom. Say you can't criticize me because I'm completely clueless. I'm totally ignorant. I have absolutely zero idea 
of what's going on in my department that I'm tasked with overseeing and running. I don't have a clue. So don't blame me because I'm completely in the dark. I'm sailing as blind as you are on this. I mean, can you... Do you realize what he's admitting here, the level of incompetence and ineptitude that he's confessing to here? But his claim that his recusal from the case exempted him from all discussion of the matter didn't fly with Republicans or Democrats on the committee who justifiably saw his recusal as more of an abdication. Now, we've got uh, some sound bites coming up, Let's uh, and including one that will just illustrate his his manifest ignorance where he confesses it. But let's grab clip number one. Uh, this is Holder talking about this recusal. But hey, hey, don't come after me. I recuse myself. I don't know anything. You recuse yourself when you have a conflict of interest. When, uh, you, you, as a judge, you could recuse yourself because you know the defendant or you may have a stake in the outcome of the case, and so you recuse yourself. Now, uh, Holder, Holder is saying, I recuse myself. That's why I didn't sign off on the memos. But then ask, well, where's the written authorization? That's got to be in writing somewhere. I don't know. I don't even remember when I did it. So here's uh, what he's saying when he's asked this question. Okay, you recused yourself. Fine. When did you do it? Where's the paperwork? Let's listen. Let me ask you this. On what day did you recuse yourself? Um, I'm not sure. I think it's just towards the beginning of the matter. I don't, I don't know exactly when, but it was towards the beginning of the matter. All right, and then let's uh, grab clip number two. This is Eric Holder talking about the, the interference with the media trampling on the First Amendment right to freedom of the press. Here's Eric Holder uh, on that. A lot of criticism. In fact, the head of the RNC called for my resignation um, in spite of the fact that I was not the person who was involved in that decision. Um, but uh, be that as it may, uh, I was recused in that matter, uh, as I described, I guess, in a press conference that I held yesterday. The decision to um, issue this subpoena was made by the people who are presently involved in the case. So he has learned from the master, nothing is ever my fault. I was not the person involved in that decision. I have no idea who it was. I don't know who it was that made that decision, even though... I'm the one that's running that department. I'm in charge. I'm the one that makes all the important decisions. I tell people what to do, despite the fact that all authority to lead that department's invested in me. I am absolutely clueless. I have not clue one about what my own people are doing. Ineptitude on steroids. Back in two.